Hey everybody, it's Brother Josh here and we're going to bring a new video to you today. Uh, we're going to pick up where we had left off some time ago. We're in uh, the third installment of the Word series, The Word Today, and uh, we'll be finishing up the Complete Word series. I hope you've enjoyed these. I know we've had a, a brief intermission with a different video and I hope you also enjoyed that and received some edification from it. But uh, before I get started, I'd like to say that I've had quite a few subscribers in the past uh, month or two, and I want to thank y'all for subscribing, and uh, please feel free to interact in the comments, and uh, you know, if there's anything that you would like to hear about, any sermons or teachings on, please put it down there, and if I can do it, then uh, we'll see about getting those put up there for you. All right, so let's start today talking about the Word, and not just the Word, but the Word today. Now, <clears throat> we had previously taught on about the Word before the world, and then we talked about the Word uh, became flesh, and today we're going to talk about the Word as it is today. And please remember, when we talk about the Word, we're not necessarily always talking about this book right here. We know what the Bible says. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. That means Jesus Christ, before he was known as Jesus Christ, was the Word. And he was made flesh, and he came to this earth to fulfill the mission that the Father gave him. All right, so we're going to start out reading in the book of Acts, chapter 1. We're going to read 6 through 9. We'll get into our teaching after this. When they therefore were come together, they asked of the Lord, asked of Jesus, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So, we see at this point in the book of Acts that the Word or Jesus Christ has fulfilled his earth, excuse me, has fulfilled his earthly mission to save mankind. Not only has he saved mankind, but he has fulfilled the law of Moses. He has lived a sinless life. He has given testimony that he was the Messiah and saved all who believed in his atoning sacrifice upon the cross. The, the word was made flesh to carry out this mission. Now we see in the book of Acts that Christ has ascended to heaven, and he has gone to heaven to fulfill another role, the great high priest to the believer. That is me and you if we're saved. Listen to Hebrews 8, 1 and 2. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Now that the word is back in heaven, resuming his glory and functioning as high priest, he chose to reveal the word, listen to this, in a familiar but different way to those on earth. So he was the word before his incarnation. He was the word in his incarnation. Now he has gone back to heaven and now he is going to reveal the word in a different manner. Listen to John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I, speaking of Jesus, go away. For if I go away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
Now we know that Jesus did depart and the Spirit did come. Now we see the entrance of the Spirit when the 120 are in the upper room and the Spirit comes as a mighty rushing wind and he evidences himself as cloven tongues of fire and diverse tongues of men given supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 through 16, Christ gives the apostles some of the functions of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm going to give you seven of these functions. One, he says the Holy Spirit will teach us, the believer, all things. That he will also bring to memory the words of Christ. He, the Spirit, will testify of Christ. He will guide the believer into all truth. He gives the believer commands from the Son. He will reveal the future, and he will glorify the Son of God. Now, with all those things being said, this brings me to point number one. So please notice this. God has chosen to reveal his word through the agency of the Holy Ghost. Let me say that one more time. God has chosen to reveal the word through the agency of the Holy Ghost. Well, let's read an example of this in Scripture. 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scriptures is of any private interpretation. Now, this word uh, private interpretation in this context basically means this. Man is not the origin of the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Spirit is. All right. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter was given the revelation that the Gentiles would receive the gospel just like Israel. To Paul was given the meaning of the new covenant and the revelation of the resurrection. So we see here that the Holy Spirit is working through men of God, bringing and illuminating the word for their benefit and understanding. Point two, God has chosen to reveal the word by the agency of the Holy Spirit through the medium of born again man. Let me read that one more time. God has chosen to reveal the word by the agency of the Holy Spirit through the medium of the born-again man, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we see here that the word of God being on the inside of a believing man, speaking and teaching these words, it, it uh, helps and edifies, builds up, leads and guides those who listen, amen? That is what preaching and teaching the word is for. What is inspiration? Inspiration is this. God divinely influenced human authors of the scriptures in such a way that when they wrote, it was the very word of God. Inspiration in the Greek means God breathed. So when you read the Bible, Old and New Testament, you are reading the truth of God and his will for all mankind. And let me say this, that when we fail to do the will of God, we really do miss out on the best that God has for us in our life. And if you want to know the will of God for your life, then you're going to have to get in this word. And let me stop here for just a minute. There are so many Christians out there, people who are truly saved, but they rarely spend time in the word of God. And it is sad because God has given us so much insight and revelation of himself, wisdom when it comes to living our lives, that will make our lives more rich, more blessed, and will help uh, us carry out his will in this earth. And y'all, the word of God coupled with the Holy Spirit is an unstoppable, it's just unstoppable. His word will go out and it will produce what he has sent it forth to produce. It will not 
return to him void. The word is truth. So when you read the Bible, Old and New Testament, you are reading the truth of God and his will for all mankind. The word is truth. The word is of Jesus Christ. The word is inerrant. Now, that word inerrant, let me explain to you what that means. There were no mistakes made by man when he originally penned the scriptures. God made sure that there was no mistakes. So when the men of God who wrote these 66 books in this Bible, when they sit down and they put pen to paper, and it actually wasn't pen to paper back in that time, uh, uh, a lot of them use clay tablets and a stylist and, and a few different other methods. But when they, when they made these 66 books, uh, God made sure that his word was being preserved and it was being preserved truthfully. And this Bible is a trustworthy Bible. When we read this, we are reading the actual word and revelation of God to mankind. And we don't have to worry about getting a falsehood. We know Jesus is true, that he was the word before creation. He was the word made flesh. He is now the word in heaven serving as high priest. And he has now uh, sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts to reveal the word to us. All right. The word is God's revelation of himself to man. So understand this, is that Jesus Christ is now in heaven. He's not here on earth. So how else is he going to reveal himself to man? Well, we see that he has revealed himself through the agency of the Holy Spirit and through the written word of God. And so while he's in heaven serving that function as priest, while he's in heaven, sit, heaven sitting next to the right, sitting on the right hand of the Father, we right now during this age of grace know the Lord through prayer, through the Bible, and through the Holy Spirit. Because these are all three ways that we get in touch with the Lord. And friend, when you go and you pray and you read the word and you go there in faith, the Bible says that he rewards those who seek him diligently. Amen. Don't just read the Bible one day and say a little five minute prayer and say, oh, there's nothing to this. No, those who search diligently, those who seek him diligently, those are the ones he reveals himself to. And knowing God Really, I was going to say knowing God takes a lifetime, but really it takes longer than a lifetime to know God. I don't know that God is completely knowable. He is so, uh, he is so just diverse in his character and knowing uh, all the wonderful things that he has done. Uh, I have not seen nor ear heard, you know, the wonderful things that God has done. 1 Peter 1.23 says this, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We are born again by the incorruptible word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word's never going away. The word will always be. Point three, and I'm coming to a close. In some mysterious way, the word of God is the written form of the living Christ. One more time. In some mysterious way, the word of God is the written form of the living Christ. As such, it is energized at all times by the Holy Spirit which means that in, the same, that in the same way, the Holy Spirit literally inhabits the word. Listen to Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick, or that word quick there means living. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word of God is living and the word of God is powerful. Now, 
The word of God, Genesis through Revelation, is like no other book. It is above all other books in subject matter and in content. It should never be seen just as a good book or a historical book or a wise book, but it should be seen as the holy, living, powerful, inspired word of God. And listen, people, this word right here is the foundation. It is the absolute foundation of your Christianity. This is what we believe. This is what we follow. And we do it because God has revealed himself in this manner for this particular dispensation that we are in. The writers of scripture wrote the word on paper so Christ could be revealed to us who have not experienced him firsthand in the flesh. And I tell you what, I don't know, this kind of just come to me, and I would like to read it. Uh, John said this at the very end of his gospel. He says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So you see that John wrote the book that is named after him to evidence and to show you that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. That John wrote that book in order for men to believe in him, so believe in Jesus so that they may be saved. And today, maybe you've heard this and you say, I want to know the Lord and Savior. Well, I'm going to give you the chance in order to know him. If you want to know him, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need salvation. I know, Lord God, that without you, I would go to hell. And I believe that you have died upon the cross to save me from my sins. And Lord Jesus, I put my faith in you so that I may be saved. And Lord, I thank you for this salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this is Brother Josh finishing up the series on the Word. Goodbye.